to the Invincible Podcast with Lee Judges, Julian and myself. We are here yet again to talk about the Arsenal. And uh, let's dive straight into it because the game's been coming thick and fast. We had a game against Manchester City, which we're going to talk about that in a few minutes. But let's start with talking about the game against Luton. Um, Arsenal beating Luton by two goals to nil. Three points, job done for most people. Mm. Look, for people, Julian, some people were for happy, Julian, however, he was very disappointed. Yeah. We saw your fan cam. Very negative. You said you're very disappointed in a 2 0. You was expecting 6 7. You know what I mean? Get that goal difference right up. Booed the team off, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> no. But people might believe that. I know you say it as a joke. But I, I, I never ever since when we lost five five nil to City. Turned your back on them. No, I didn't. Since when we lost five nil to City um, last season, whenever it was, I, I still clap them off. So I would never <laughs> ever be that negative. But yes, you it, were very negative I, after the uh, two nil victory over Luton. I was um, saying that you know you was disappointed that we didn't take advantage. We didn't you know up the goal difference. Even though we're we've got a very good goal difference at the moment. You know it's a clean sheet. It's job done, Julian. That's all it is. Like, at this stage of the season, all we need to do is just keep winning our games, yeah. racking up those three points and keeping the pressure on. Yeah, well, I felt that I almost did like half a fan cam and I'm not blaming you for Half that. a fan cam? Half a fan cam because my idea was to get all the negatives out of the way and I felt that it wasn't a totally positive performance but then end off with the positives. Yeah, but you didn't um, for, say that in your... Wait a minute before you... No, I didn't. ...criticise and... and I, you, you're having a go at me now doing fan camps. No. Because you no. didn't start off by saying, oh, God, Robbie, I've, let me get the negatives out of the way first, then we'll get to the positives. You just jumped straight into the fact that you were very disappointed in the fact that it was 2-0, it's Luton. You know what I mean? You said that we should be smashing these teams about five and stuff like that. I yeah, mean... Yeah, that's right. You even said you might not be going Brighton. <laughs> yeah, <I'm right>. <laughs> <laughs> Are you going to ever open your mouth and say something sensible, or is it? Do you want, just want to continue? Uh, no, no. Yeah, but, no, yeah, it's no, not no, like no, you. I, 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 I believe, right, I, Robbie. I'm going to. Be, I believe, right. Everybody. So trouble with him yesterday, right? He went first. That was his trouble. Like he normally, <laughs> go, he normally gauges what a few people are doing. But he's gone in there. He's jumped in. He's jumped in first, right? And of course, he ain't got nothing. He he, he, he ain't got whatever people have got to say, like. So he's gone on it. What he actually thinks, right? You know what I mean? But what I, what was... Julian Becker thinks is what we see yesterday, like. He didn't gauge what other people were thinking. And then, like, and all of a sudden, oh, oh, can we do my fan cam again, like? I, mean, like <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't say that either. But, but here's the thing about fan cams: whether I'm happy with it or not so happy with it, doing having a fan cam, you get the reaction immediately after the game. You don't get to see too many replays. You haven't heard any commentary, as as you said, you haven't really heard what other people have said. And quite often when you go back and you watch Match of the Day, which I did several times when, when I got home yesterday and also this morning, your opinions do change. And I have to say, what I said yesterday, I now, although I don't disagree with anything I said, because I think that it can come, it can come down to um, goal difference. And also, I do think there was a potentially a missed opportunity. I think there was various valid reasons for that performance. And also, there was plenty of positives about that performance as well. Let me, let me just... This is why the performance yesterday, I thought, shows maturity, professionalism, and it shows that we have actually learnt from mm. last season. There were some games last season that we all went to the Emirates, me and you, we yep. sit next to each other, we're walking up to the stadium and thinking, yeah, tonight, man. <laughs> Southampton are coming to town. They're yeah. right near the bottom. Remember Southampton? Yeah. They were right near the bottom. They yeah. ended up getting relegated. Yeah. Right near the bottom, you're thinking. Maybe the players are thinking that as well. Next meeting, though, we're losing. 2-0. Then we had to... 2-1. Then we had to fight back to get a 3-3 free, free draw in the end. And it was a massive two points dropped in a game against a team that we should have battered. Mm. We had the Bournemouth game. Remember that? You know, all right, it was a great finish, entertaining game. You know, brilliant game. But we struggled to get back and get that 3-2 win. What I felt 
in watching that Luton game was went two nil up at half time, and it's almost like the message went out. Like, yeah, we're two nil up. They're facing, you know, they're doing a relegation dogfight. So let them come and try and, you know, you know, because as it stands, we're winning the game. We've got a great defence. So what we do, we just hold firm. We look after the ball. We, you know, and on the counter attack, if they mess around and they mess up on the counter attack, make mistakes, we'll get them that way. But otherwise, we just see this home because all we want from this game is the three points. We're not here to at this stage to entertain people and things like that. Yeah, we don't want no epic game. We just want to see this out. And that's exactly what they did. And that, mm. to me, showed a lot of maturity from the team. These clean sheets that they're keeping, the way in which they're defending solidly, was very, very impressive about that game. Yes, I know, you know, we all want them in that second half to go for the second, to go for the third, the fourth, the fifth. But... You can go, even even if you think about it this, you can be going for that third, so gun-ho that you concede one, then your goal difference is worse because you've only got a goal difference of one. Because mm. yeah, it ended up 2-1. That's what I mean. I mean, from a defensive perspective, I didn't think we were ever in any trouble. Yeah. I wasn't I, tested. I, I mean, we, I, the we, only we, shot we, Rhea yeah, had to save was that one from the free, free kick. kick. Um, I mean, you look at their XG, I think it was like, so like 0.23 or something. And I can't even think of how they managed that. They did not look like scoring. From a defensive perspective, we didn't put a foot wrong. I didn't think they had much coming, coming forward. I didn't think they offered much. I thought our defence looked impeccable. And one thing I would still stand by, I thought it was potentially a missed opportunity to, inc well, it is a missed opportunity to increase increase the goal difference because for me that's the weakest team we will face and if Liverpool do beat Sheffield United tonight which I think is more than likely and also there's a good chance that Liverpool can absolutely smack um, Sheffield United I, I wouldn't be totally surprised if it is 8-9-0 after seeing Sheffield United recently 8-0 I could I wouldn't be surprised I'm not saying it will but, but I would think that if I had to call it tonight I would say that Liverpool will win by five at Anfield, having seen Sheffield United and having seen Liverpool recently. I, I, I agree to, to some of the things that you're saying there, but I also think you've got to take in the context of what's coming in the next week or so. Like, you know, mm. We've got Brighton coming yep. along and then we've got uh, Bayern three, yep. three days later. So I, I do think there was a... What I think Arsenal were learnt by, and I, I, I felt probably... And we could have got another goal and probably should have gone for another goal like you know in my my opinion if we won 3-0 I'd, I'd have thought yeah that was probably about right but we we made lots of changes in Europa League last season and poor performances and, and things like that and didn't get jobs done we made a load of changes um, five changes in the end I was shocked by five I'm going to be mm -hmm. honest I, 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 I didn't think it'd be as many Maybe as five the team. and yeah half the, half the, players, half, right? yeah, half the team mm. and we still got the job done. It wasn't quite right as we normally do. I didn't think it was it was it was a great performance, but it was never going to be that. It was about getting through, winning the game, getting party, getting minutes. Smith Rowe getting minutes, Shinchenko getting minutes, but also more importantly, Jesus not playing, and and, and Saka. Saka, you know, and, and also uh, Declan Rice getting some sort of break. And it got to the stage, even though we was two nil up. I'm, I'm looking at Mikel. Like, what, what are you doing, bringing on Declan Rice? You know what I mean. So, uh, part of me is I think that it was actually to, needed at that point because yeah, they because they were starting to not starting control get, the midfield, but starting to get a foothold in the game. Well, I think because I think they were just, tired, I think we were tired. Rest um, party party yeah. was yeah, absolutely knackered. It was tiring. Yeah, that's the longest he's played. I, I would have put Jorginho in there or something. I'm, but uh, that's the thing. I'm, the point I'm trying to say is that on one that minute I'm saying minutes, let's go and get more goals, and then on the other hand I'm going, well, don't bring Declan Rice on. And I think like if Declan Rice comes on, we we got a little bit more control. We might have gone and scored some more goals. It weren't the greatest game in the world. But mm. listen, when when radio stations and pundits and all that are criticising the crowd, yeah, because that's what they that's all they could do. Then we're doing something right, aren't we? Because they're not you know, like on, on Sunday they're criticising we parked the bus. On Wednesday, they're criticising the fans, you know what I mean? Like for not being noisy enough, like, you know what I mean? Um and then it's always looking to criticise us, so it's great. We're doing something right. Yeah, we yeah. are doing well, something and, right. And which is why I was disappointed with my fan cam because there was plenty of positives about last night. Yeah, we didn't that, hear any of them. We didn't hear any of them, no. Well, 
you're going to hear them now if you'd let me. Um, the, it's a bit late now. <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit late now. Just seen last night. No one else gets the opportunity to to uh, eradicate their poor pro- fan cams, do they? Like you know, what yeah. I mean? like, you know, actually. But, but there was disgraceful fan cams. Disgraceful, disgraceful. But negative. It was negative. Right. Negative Nelly, that's what I'm going to call him. <laughs> it from was, now, it was. I, I, I'd expect I, that from Lee. I, 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 I'd have expected I'm, that from Lee I'm judges. I, I heard him saying that he didn't. Well, he, well obviously, I'm not going to get the opportunity. He, 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 uh, he didn't even clap the fans after the uh, players after the games. Oh, that's, that's around. rubbish. He said, no, no I'm not clapping them. I'm negative, like, you know. I, I, he's but, gone. But, he's gone. But one of the reasons for that is because my expectations have been raised so much from the unbelievable performances we've seen since yeah. you know, this year and I think that's true of all, all fans that that second half performance in relation to what we've seen recently was poor but it was still good enough and the other aspect as, as you've alluded to is the amount of changes that we've made mm. that we've not made more as, as many changes as that since we played Norwich remember when he made about seven or eight changes when we won 1-0 after we'd lost our first three games yeah, yeah. and it and we scraped a one nil victory against Norwich that that day, and the crowd were elated. I was on such a high because we'd we lost win. our first th- three games, and I think if he hadn't won that game, Arteta could well have been sacked. Mm. And he'd made so many changes, and something we we mentioned before, and Arteta's mentioned in his press conferences, is it's not just about the players; it's about the relationships of the players. And yes, the making five changes is obviously going to disrupt those relationships. Yeah. And at the beginning of the season, people were saying that Arsenal hadn't clicked because you had a number of players coming into the team and a slightly different formation. And the players were getting to know that system. And last night, when you put five, and they're not new players because every one of those players is a fabulous player, but you change the team to that extent and you are going to get a lack of relationship and understanding. Yeah. And that's what happened. But yeah. it was good enough. Who stood out for you um, of all the players, players that came in? Because like you said, five changes. Um, Partey, Smith Rowe, Reese Nelson, Zinchenko. Um, who's the other one? Which ones did you say? Partey? Trossard came in. Trossard. Yeah. Mm. yeah, Trossard came in from the... Um, I thought Trossard yeah. done well. I thought Trossard... I think like, you, you have to go on Smith Rowe and, and Partey. Mm. I think both of them showed their class. I, I actually look back at Partey's performance today. And, um, he, he, he was very good. He was very, very good. He wasn't pressed in the way that he probably would be in other games and all that. But that was... If you was to say, right... I'm going to give you 60, 70 minutes of a game. That was a perfect game for him to come back and get some minutes under his belt. It wasn't a high tense game, it was, but he was allowed to get his passes. But he was dictating play from, from, from the back there. And I think it's very interesting now, does he bring him back for the, mm. for the Brighton game or not? I think it's a real call. I, I, I think that we're going to need him. But I, I, for me, I thought there was a real... A lot of pressure on Smith Rowe yesterday, like to uh, and Nelson because you know I didn't know that I, because we was at the game. Nelson was actually left out of the squad, wasn't he? Mm. For for Man City, weren't even there. For yeah. him to come back and, and produce a, a, a performance like he did was 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 really good. And uh, and Smith Rowe, I, I felt there was pressure on Smith Rowe yesterday. Yeah, and he and delivered. He, and he delivered. He delivered. Yeah, and I mean he was he was the one. He was the one that contributed. Yeah, for the first goal, it was his little. Yeah, he yeah, won the ball. He won the ball. Second goal, it was his assist. Second goal was his assist. So he played really well. Um, and yeah, it was just good to see these players stepping up. And um, the rotation worked worked perfectly for the manager. He's been able to rest up some key players. He would have been pleased with that, Rob. Come up against you. Brighton. Of course, before that game, it was the Man City game. What have you made of all the uh, talk? I mean, there's a lot of people been out there saying, oh, I saw they part the bus, so oh, they're boring, oh, you big go for one. it. Yeah. A lot of City fans are a bit upset as well, saying, you know, and that oh, I was a big arsehole, he just came, he just sat there, and he, I mean, he made Negative no, attempt arsehole, to, they've said. no attempt to win the game. And but I mean, like when I, when I was watching back the highlights, we had the best yeah. chances. Mm-hmm. What are you talking yeah. about? Very, very funny, like you know, laughable. The Man City fans uh, last few few days, you know, they're all happy now because um, Aston Villa didn't park the bus, like, and they won four <laughs> one, like you know. Yeah. So, uh, you know, um, but but that, we, all all that is saying, all the things that is taking the onus off them and putting it all on us. And, and at the end of it, 
one of the one of the things that I find really funny about it, like, oh, why didn't you come and open up against us at the at the area? Well, why didn't you come and open up at us at, at, at the Emirates? Oh, mm. no, you got beat. You know, so even uh, last season, when you think about it, even though obviously they smashed us last season, but their tactic was long ball. They didn't really yeah. mm. remember it was always get the ball up, long ball to Haaland, he'd knock it down, and then De Bruyne would come onto the sort of second ball. That's kind of like their tactic in that game. So, you know, the, the people greatest, use different tactics against different teams. The greatest thing that I can take from it, we was on the on the on the tram on the way home, going back into Manchester. A couple of uh city fans were in front were going, we we'll have you in the semi final. We're, 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 we're making the pain league, league. in the Champions League semi final. So, well, we ain't even beaten Bayern Munich yet. You'll beat them. They, they, they were they, confident. They were confident that they was going to get through Real Madrid. And as we're, we're, we'll have you. Because <laughs> they was annoyed that what we'd done to them that day. Well, they was yeah. annoyed. At they the end of it, yeah. that they're still behind us because of that. Stopped them from scoring for the first time in what was it, 50, 57 games they'd gone. 57, 57 games. 57 games they'd gone. Mm. By scoring and all fo- 57 of those those games, we I mean Harland, I mean Harland's the kind of player I, I thought it was quite amusing. What uh, Roy Keane? No, said. I, I thought it was terrible. Oh, I thought it was funny. <laughs> no, I don't. But he was made to look like what what Keane described. He was made to look like that in that game. He's obviously not. He's obviously a world class player. So but, take, so so compliment the central defenders then, and 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 not 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 criticise some because you've had beef with his dad. You know what I mean? <laughs> is that what you reckon it is? I, 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 think, I, 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 I don't know. I, I love Roy, Roy Keane as a pundit. Yeah, I think he's I very think good. But that was totally out, totally inappropriate. At the end of the day, he's a good player. He's a goal scorer. He's banging in goals left, right and centre. They they, they picked on Harlem because he's Norwegian and, and whatever. No one said a thing about Foden, who didn't get mm. a kick in the game as well. You know what I mean? He comes back, scores an hat trick. Everything's great about Foden again, like, you know. Um, but he never got a kick against Arsenal. The end of the day, they'd rather slag off a striker that uh, was breaking records left, right, and centre. And I tell you, I, 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 we've all we've all said it. I've said it. Like you know, Harry Kane's a better footballer than him. You know, if all-round footballer mm. he is. You know, we'll have a lot more difficulty against Kane over two games where he uh, drop into little pockets and things like that. Haaland don't do that. He is a goal scorer. There's been loads of them about. Gary Lineker wasn't the greatest. Uh, mm. Off the ball and all that, but when it when it the, the, he could finish, and that's why he was great. And I, I felt that was very very. But that's not what Roy Keane was saying. He was actually making the comment on um, a clip that they were showing of Manchester City warming up before the game, and they were doing this one touch um, exercise, and he was pretty poor in that. And I think what he's saying is that if Haaland doesn't score. He hasn't really got much else to watch. Yeah, he was saying it. He was like saying that. it in a funny dis. Look, you can call it disrespectful. Nah, it wasn't I can call it disrespectful. I can, I can call it funny. Yeah, yeah it, but, it was but, funny. But, but it was funny, but, but it was but disrespectful. He was, but he was making to say a fact, he's a, like a yeah, League Two player off the he ball. He was he was making a valid point. He just said it in a way that Roy Keane could only. I I I'm with Lee, right? That you know, give some credit to Saliba, and give some credit to Gabriel. I'm not saying you're not. I'm saying Roy Keane, right? We've seen Haaland this season bully defenders. Destroy yeah. The same sort of style, like bully. Use it. I remember the game against Luton. I remember the game, remember Everton, when he bullied that Brathwaite off the, that Brathwaite <laughs> fell over. I've seen him hold up the ball well. I've seen him bully players, right? All season. Yes, he, didn't, he couldn't get to do that against Arsenal because Saliba and Gabriel matched him and, and, and nullified him. And that's what you should have been saying. Not, you know, he's a league to... Yeah, you know, oh, I agree. He didn't I say thought, that when he got actually against Man United, did he? Yeah, yeah, that was disrespectful. You know I, mean? I mean, because he's, <clears throat> he's not. He can hold the ball up and he can be dangerous. Last season, he, you know, as I said, he's winning balls and then playing into De Bruyne and that's how they got their win. But over the two games that we played them in the league, Saliba and Gabriel have had his number. Yeah. They've been in his pocket both games and that's where I want to give the credit because those two, the way in which they're defending right now, they're the best centre-back pairing in the mm. Premier League. I'd We've got the best defence in I'd the Premier League. In the world. Yeah, well, in the world... So, um, so who's a better pairing? You can say there's individual players. I mean, it's almost like the, the famous Arsenal no, you back, could back say, four with, with Tony Adams is you wouldn't necessarily say each one of those four players were, were the best yeah. players in the world, but as a unit... 
they were the best unit about probably the best in the, the world. I'd have, to, mm. I'd have to think about it. I mean, you know, you've got some great defenders out there, but them, yeah, them two... But what I'm saying is as a unit, but together, as you said, that partnership, forget about the individuals because it's not about 11 great individuals. It's about a, a team. And as a unit, those two, for whatever reason, have a fantastic... I said they're great players in their own right, but together... Mm, even better. They're even better. Yeah, 100%. And that's where we're looking good right now. This is what gives us a real chance of this title, is the defence. Yeah. You win titles with good defences. When you go in, you don't lose games, right? And at the moment, you don't see a lot of teams scoring against Arsenal, the no. way they're defending. And you can see that Gabriel and Saliba are taking a real pride in these clean sheets, in defending, in being solid, in, you know, and and also I, I feel that at the moment, and I noticed it in the Luton game, I feel that like it's starting to be that their reputation is preceding them. So, you know, it's like if you're a striker, you might think to yourself, oh boy, I'm not going to try and get overly physical because I know these guys will match it. Let me try, try something else sort of thing. They're getting a reputation for being really, really top class centre-backs. A bit like what Van Dyke's always had. Yeah. You know? he's always had that thing you can't really dribble past him so a lot of times you'll have players they don't even attempt to try and dribble past him just try and pass it off and get past him that way because they know he's so good these two are developing that sort of reputation that sort of partnership and you know it's what's making Arsenal right now such a good side unbelievable and I think like Luton had scored so many goals in 18 games on the, on the spin yep and, and that, um, was a, that was a league record there. A league record for a team coming yeah. up. And they never looked like scoring. I, no. I, 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 Junior will back me up on that. I, I said on Sunday, they ain't going to score Man City. Like, I felt confident about no. it. No, you didn't say and, that. Um, and, and also, like, hmm? very, very... No, he didn't say that. Oh, he didn't say uh, that. I, 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 I did. He, <laughs> he didn't he, say he, 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 I'll tell you what, like, yeah. No, because I've... I've, I've <laughs> After what you uh, just Because like, he, uh, he's turned his back on the team. Like, you know, he's going, they're going to score in a minute. He kept saying, I said... No, no I did. He, he did, like... No, I did. And I said, I, 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 I felt very, very confident we weren't yeah. going to score. Yeah. Uh, I did say uh, No, no, you did say it. But the other thing I'd like to say about that game was... The occasion should have been stressful. And the occasion, in some respects, was stressful. That it could almost be construed, you know, take Liverpool out of the equation, which I know you can't. But of those two teams, Arsenal, Man City, you can almost look at it as a title decider. So it should have been a really tense game, and it wasn't. No, because we we defended so well we and controlled the game. Yeah, control, like you know, and we defended again very very well yesterday. And it's getting to the state. Where, you know, when Arsenal even. Should I say when we was winning leagues, we'd be two 0 up, and you fit, and all of yeah. a sudden we're conceding, we're hanging on. Do you, I remember? Do you remember playing Liverpool one year? We was winning two um, two nil comfortably, and um, they, I think it was when um, Van Bronckhorst got sent off, and then they score seventy minutes in, they get one back, and for twenty minutes, you know, it was um, there was so many games like that. You know, you know another thing. Not we just said not that. now. Another thing that we solved. We solved it last season and again this season. Discipline. Remember the previous season, how many times we were getting players sent off? Yeah. Mm. We were getting players sent off left, right and centre. I remember Gabriel getting sent off against City. Then we're down to 10 men and we lose that. You know what I mean? And we were getting players sent off. We haven't had a player sent off this season or last season. Yeah, we've got, um, Tommy Ashley got sent off, didn't he, at Crystal Palace? Ridiculously. For the, oh, yeah, for yeah. The, yeah. So in the first, first game. Yeah. So, yeah. So I don't that, think was, that was a yeah. poor sending off, yeah. yeah. I don't think other than that. You know, but... The discipline's better. Mm. Just the execution I of defending. Suspended. I know that Habits is yeah, close. Yeah, Habits, 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 got, Habits got suspended for five bookings, didn't he? Right. Yeah. I think he's, 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 won. he's close again. He's close again now. Is he on nine now? Well, this is the thing, is that Arteta said that he's on nine, but I think he's including the charity shield in that, which which doesn't count towards it so he's probably on eight so as long as he doesn't get booked twice in the next two games then he should be fine although he has been booked twice in the last two games and, right. I, th and I also thought yesterday's was a pointless that was stupid yes, and, and if he does get another two bookings it's two game suspension yep. which is a little bit yeah. worse but, and, and we don't need that you know, uh, so is it what the two, is two more games in the next to Fabio Vieira yeah. got sent off as well I think yeah Vieira got sent off yeah Fabio Vieira got sent off as well. But I think we were oh, yeah, well he up, did, in, that, he? He we were well up got... in that game. Was that Brighton? It was a bit harsh. Mm -hmm. No, it, was it wasn't. Harsh. It. He didn't mean it, yeah, but yeah, I can see why. The discipline Dangerous. has got better. The, bit, the discipline has got better. Those centre, you know, those centre halves are not getting sent off. Those, mm. those, yeah, it's, it's, it's pleasing to see 
and we're a proper team now, Robert. Yeah, uh, yeah. We're a proper team you because know? we're in control. That's the difference. Is when you're in control, you don't have to dive in for yeah. those last minute, mm. last minute change. But yeah. one one thing I'd like to say about the game and the criticism that Arsenal got, I don't think Arsenal went out with the intention to play like that. So I see that as a positive, in as much as the game went a certain way and they were able to adapt. And the reason I said that was because of the kickoff. And the way that they took the kickoff, Raya, was very reminiscent. Was this a City game? Uh, this was a City game. So when they kicked off, what happens is the ball gets played back to Raya and they play it two different ways. If they feel like they're in control of the game, they'll, Raya will launch the ball forward. If they're not, they'll try and take the heat out of it. So how do you, how do, how do you know when the game's just started? Because in control of the it's, game or not. it's from the kickoff is how they've been taught and how they've been coached but, what to but, do. So, so, go, just going off your methodology, like <laughs> yes. Yeah, so, so in the kickoff, so so the way that the kickoff occurred. <laughs> so you're going to know from from the first second. Yeah, you're gonna know you, the so, game. So, if, so if Arsenal got the kickoff, you're going to know what the coaching was, and I'm going to look out for this. Yeah. So so, so what happened look, look. was the kickoff against Manchester City. He went the, long. The ball gets played back to Raya, who goes long. So the straight away they want to go on the offensive rather than take the heat out mm. of the, the game. So if they feel that they need to take the heat out of the game right at the beginning from the first second from the first second they'll play the ball back to Raya mm. and they'll start playing so the ball around the take back take the heat out of the game before the game starts <laughs> well the game has started take the heat out of the crowd and that's another thing of, that, so, I dis- that I actually disagreed with you about was that so the, hold on, hold on. So what, did, what, did we, what did we do yesterday what did we do yesterday? Yeah. We didn't have the kickoff, so I couldn't tell. The second half we had a kickoff. Yeah, but the, the game's ah, already started. Like, it's, 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 it's got to win the kickoff. No, no, it's, it's, it's got to be before we start yeah. the kickoff. Yeah, so, so we won the kickoff against City? Well, we took the kickoff yeah, against what did we do? City. We launched it long. Interestingly enough, against West Ham, when, again, I was able to see this a lot clearer because I wasn't at the game, um, we actually played the ball short. I th- and they started kicking it around the back and took the heat out of it, like to suck the life out of the crowd. That's kind of the slowing it down routine. Mm. So when they go long, what's that then? That means they want to go on the offensive straight away because they're launching the ball long towards the goal. Oh, right. I'm going to be looking out for that. So look out for that against Brighton, see what happens. Well, you, you, this is something that you've just seen. and I, I have seen it, but I've read, I've read about tactics. I've been reading and doing research. It wasn't all my own work. <laughs> I'll tell you what, there was, was another point about the game. And I, um, I was listening to what, when you was on Talk Sport that, you know, old, old Jeff was trying to make it out. Like, you know, yes, they had defenders missing. They had all their attacking options available, Man City. Yep. Every single one of them. And sometimes, I, I, I genuinely think, you, you're right, what well, you're saying here, I don't think we plan to, 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 to shut in like that. But they, mm. they force us to do it. Mm. Some of, if you ever look back at the game, some of their pressing that they done. Have you ever seen Saliba get the ball in areas and have to kick it out? Like mm. yesterday, he got himself in a couple of little positions and he weaved his way out of it, a little one-two here or a turn and twist and got out of it. Against City, he, he had to that. knock it out. Yeah. And I don't mind that because he looked at the situation and said, I'm, I'm not taking a it's gamble about adapting, here. Adapting, isn't adapting. it? And he done it. But they were offensively very, very good at pressing mm. us and put, getting, the, getting the ball back and everything, winning the ball back. But we then said, right, OK, break us down. Mm. And, I, you know, I don't think we got the credit we deserve for it. No, we didn't. No, no, we didn't. Also, you can give Man City credit in as much as I actually think Manchester City, and I, I hate saying this, are probably the best team. I've ever seen in all the time that I've been watching football and for us to not only be able to compete with them I don't think anyone can argue Barcelona. I think they're on a par I mean that Barcelona team I didn't see as much of them I mean I saw some fabulous games with Barcelona and Arsenal but I wasn't seeing Barcelona every week so I, mm. I, I, I don't have the knowledge to be able to compare it but having seen City over the last decade consistently I, I would say they're the best team I've ever seen personally in, in football and yep. for us to now, there's, there's no doubt that we're competing with them and there's an argument that we're better than them. Hmm. Well, um, they got their victory. City as well, they beat um, Aston Villa by four goals to one. There's many people thinking maybe Villa might put up a bit of a fight. <laughs> no chance. If they take any points. Um, they didn't, they got absolutely battered. As um, soon as I saw the team, no Watkins, you know, no Martinez in goal, yep. I was thinking it's going to be a long night for Villa. And it, well, they had chances though, Villa. Mm, yeah, they did yeah. have chances but it was a long night for them so City now just a point behind us um, Arsenal 
top of the league as it stands, or is the time we're recording this programme. Um, Liverpool, of course, taking on Sheffield United at home. Julian says things will be about an 8-0. Um, it could be. It Dick could, say 8-0. It, no, yeah. it, it could be. If, but, I had, if I had to call it, I'd say, I'd about, say 4. I'd say 4 mm. or 5-0. Nil. Yeah, you'd, ex- you'd expect uh, Liverpool going to win that game. It's hotting up, isn't it? I mean, then we go at the weekend. We take on um, Brighton. Not an easy game away at the Amex. Um, Man City got Crystal Palace away. Yeah, that's before they only our game. to win there last year, didn't they? Dave? Is that before? One, yes, we, we could watch I think they were 1-0 winners. Wasn't it? 1-0 winners. winners there last year. Penalty, wasn't it? Remember right at the yeah, end? Yeah, right at the end, wasn't it? Um, and then, of course, Liverpool taking on Manchester United at Old Trafford. <sighs> Who might drop points this weekend? I think we're 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 the the favourites to two. No, uh, if I'll be honest, I think like Brighton games can be mm. really tough. There's a lot of people thinking United maybe could do something against Liverpool. Of course, they'd be. Yeah, they could cup. do. They could do. It's a tough game for them. Tougher for. I I feel that with Man United um, playing today, don't help them away at Chelsea. Difficult game. Mm. If they get a positive result against Chelsea, um, maybe maybe. But I think that yeah. But Liverpool also play today. Yeah, but they're playing uh, uh, playing Sheffield United at home, where <laughs> which is a little bit different to going Chelsea away. Not that much different these days. Well, <laughs> well, uh, you know, I, I, listen, I'm, I don't know about you guys, but I want uh, I want Man United to win tonight, beat beat Chelsea, give them a little bit of confidence to go there. I think maybe I think the best we can hope for is a draw for Man United to get. It's same, still but. Manchester United at Old Trafford. And yeah, it's and, and, even, and I think like you know, I, I agree with Lee. I yeah. think it's to be a draw. I uh, think and Brighton, by the way, have only lost one game at home this season. Mm. Yeah, but I mean their, their, their current form looks poor. Well, it, I it, just uh, before I come out today, um, I was listening to a few things because they were talking about the manager looks a little bit deserving. Yeah, yeah, he looks a little yeah. bit like um, disinterested. It doesn't seem like the same bit. He, he, bit was, t- he was talking more about where he might be next yeah, season. Yeah, yeah, he's a bit of a game against Brentford. So if he might have took his, his, his eye off the ball, I don't know. But don't forget, like, you know, Brighton had a say, didn't they? They, they play us today uh, at the weekend and they've still got to go to... Um, Man City's still got to go there as well. Yep. So I think it's a tough game. I think if we come out of this game, I think... How can I say it? The haters are, are looking at. will be looking at this game. As this is a this is a possibility one, one, one that we can draw. If we go there and and really put in a good solid performance and and win two now, and they're slagging off the crowd at the end of the day, or, or the hamburgers are not quite cooked and all that, like you know, <laughs> in the away end, we've done our job. And that's how I look at it now. Make sure that we mm. put in a real good performance. I I, I think that my, my biggest worry about this game has always been been. To three days later, we've got Bayern Munich. I, I, you know, what sort of team would you go? With? Would you go with I a think very it strong team well. against Brighton? You know, because I, I kind of get the feeling with the players that he left out, Saka's going to come back into that game, right? Surely, yeah. unless he's, yep. he's ill, right? I think Rice will come back in. Um, Kivior could come back in. I think he's going to go I think, with his strongest possible. I think team. Havertz will be left out of this one. Yeah, I, th- I think Martinelli will be in. And if Saka's fit, he'll be in. Because of the way Brighton play, there's plenty of space, or usually the mm. way they play, they're, they're, in behind, they're, there's space they're. behind. So the speed can, you know, their speed can exploit that particular strategy of Brighton. I still think he, he probably won't make the five changes, but I still think he'll make two or three and have the players ready to come off the bench because mm. the quality of the bench now, you call mm. it the bench, then they're, they're not really reserve players. That they're, they're they are part of the squad. And so long as he doesn't make five changes, I, I think that you, you, you're not weakened that much anymore. The one we were talking about on the train on the way home last night, uh, and he's going to have to do it at some stage, he, he's, because he's, when do you rest Martin Odegaard? Because he mm. played in the Norway games, didn't he? And they didn't play all the time. He's, he's a captain, though. No? He's a captain. Yeah. His work rate again yesterday was sensational. I have mm. to say his performances you know, haven't dropped off. So no. I mean, you can look at what the, the Saka performance from the Man City game, and people were criticising that and, and saying that he looks tired or he looks injured. But Odegaard's performance haven't dropped off. So I think the only time you actually drop him is when the performances indicate that it's time to. And mm. at the moment, I can't see any 
you know, any mm-hmm. drop off whatsoever. No, and that, that is, is is he trying to play Smith Rowe? I, 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 maybe to get him ready for maybe it's the Aston Villa game that he mm. that he leaves him out. I, so I do you play know. all the big guns um, for that game then? Do you go? No, you go I, with I, your I, strongest I, possible team for. I play Jesus up front, which is as good as Havertz. I think Havertz is more important I don't, mm. for the for the game again. I thought he looked a little bit jaded yesterday. If I'll yeah, be he honest. did. I I think he might play Havertz on Saturday, and Jesus start against Bayern. That's so, all, you know. Um, it's going to be an interesting one. It's, it's a, now that everybody's kind of back, and you got a full squad to choose think, from. I don't, I don't think you can sort of disrespect. I'm not saying disrespect. It's the wrong word. What Bayern? No, but James Brian, has been very good uh, in the Champions uh, League. Yeah, but I, I still think you've got to go. Brian, he'll go very strong. Got it's to go away, strong. away I, from I think home as well. It's, it's away from home. I think you maybe be when you're at home, not you uh, against Aston Villa, and maybe a couple more when you're at home. It's a little bit different. I think Smith Rowe made a very very good point yesterday. I don't know if you heard it when it, on his interview. He turned around and said, "So when you when you're coming in after not playing a lot, it's best to play at home than away." Mm. So. I, I think that uh, you know, if, I, I would go. Oh, why not do it like the the, the, the best team on Saturday and the yeah. best team on? That's what I'd do. I, I, I'd go. I'd go on. Um, yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, on Saturday, strongest team possible. Rice comes back in. Um, you know, probably bring back in Kivi or because we're away from home. On do you play party or, or are you taking him out? I'm taking Partey out. I'm taking Partey out. Gino. Just for the fact that, remember, he's been out for a long time. Mm. He played a long, lot of minutes in that game. What did he play, an hour? Rest, I think longer than that, I think. I think sure he played longer than an hour. 65 he played. Chill him out. Bring back in Jorginho. That, go and get that game won. Right? Very, very important game. Then the Champions League game. Strongest possible team again. Um, maybe bringing in Jesus for a Havertz maybe I, I don't know because Jesus has been good in the Champions League remember he can't play on that knee game in game out um, they said they're going to manage that knee from now till the end of the season right and then the week at the end you know, at the end of the week now that Aston Villa game you maybe make a couple of changes for that even though it is Villa and they're a much better you know they're a very good side much better than Luton but that's when you maybe bring your Partey back in fresh and you know what I mean because if I'm not mistaken Villa are also going to have a yeah, European League conference game. aren't they conference league game mm. and they're getting to the, it's getting to that stage of the conference league where they've got to really take that serious as well well because compared with the Champions League spot conference against that I mean surely they're not going to prioritise still a Thursday conference. night yeah but still a Thursday night we would have played on we would have played on a Tuesday I mean, I have to double check it. Let me double check. Yeah, we're playing Tuesday, and, and they playing, play Thursday, yeah, right? They're, they're they're Thursday. Always, they'll always play Thursday, but mm. I just think they'll rest players for. Do, do you know what? He, he actually. I, I think yesterday. Do you know what I mean? They won't. He, he's got. They, he'll want to win that. They've got Brentford at home on Saturday, aren't they? Aston Villa. I think he looked at that game yesterday and thought, "Well, I ain't, I ain't so risking I. it. I'm so gonna, I. I'm gonna, especially after Spurs just yeah, the draw. Yeah, yeah true. I, 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 I'll, I'll throw this one. Not throw it, but like I ain't gonna risk." too many players for that one yeah so the Aston Villa Arsenal game's on the Sunday right so Sunday as we know 4.30 so we've got um, Tuesday to Sunday we got rest. Tuesday to Sunday they then playing Sunday on Wednesday. Thursday they're playing on, on Thursday and they're playing and they're, their game I don't, I don't know if they I mean they're at home I don't know if they can be resting up too many players because that's a, that's not an easy game as I said we're getting no, and, to the busiest end of the uh, conference league they got Lille Lille a good side with Jonathan David players like that Lille that's not going to be an easy game. Lille will bring a load of fans. That'll be a big game for Villa. Remember, it's it's at the stage now where Villa want to win that Conference League. They're probably one of the favourites to win yeah. it. I think... So I I get the feeling that go very strong on Saturday with your strongest possible team. Strong on Tuesday. Strong on Tuesday then with your strongest rest, possible we? team. Then we've got a rest. Then we've got a gap, assess everybody, and then maybe you could bring back in some of those your parties and people like that. Yeah, I, th- That's I, think, what I, feel. I think you make a very good point that I hadn't considered previously about this Thursday night football. 
And I'm not thinking about Villa here, I'm thinking about Liverpool, because it does, from our experiences in the Europa League, it is much harder to play on a Thursday and then have to Thursday, go on Sunday's then, harder. Then have to go on a Sunday. Yeah, it's strange why it is, but yeah, it is, isn't it? And that's one of the yeah. advantages that we do have over Liverpool. Of course, the quality of the teams we're going to play in the Champions League is far higher than Liverpool are going to have to play in the um, mm. Europa League, but they've got to play on the Thursday, Sunday. And that is an advantage for us. Yeah, and as I said, like just going back to the Villa game, Lille, no mugs. Mm. They're not playing like you know some of the teams they've been playing in the earlier rounds. You know they're playing a proper team in Lille with good team guys like, as I said, Jonathan David, as we know, these guys, these are good players. So and Emery will want to win that. Emery will want to, you know, he's got a great yeah. pedigree in Europe. He'll want to win that. So I, I think. Yeah, um, we we we're playing on the Tuesday. We got a big gap. Well, obviously, then after that we got the you know the following week we have another game in the Champions League, but that's not until the Wednesday. Mm. So, yeah, I, I think the weekend's game is big. It's big. We got to win that game. Try and put some pressure. I think it's a in massive, particularly massive on game. Liverpool. I think it's a massive game. If we win yeah. this game, it's one of those ones. It. it I, I, I know this sounds silly, but you, you're looking at our away games and you're going, oh, we've got Tottenham and Man United. They're the two games you're looking at. But Fulham, uh, sorry, like um, Wolves and Brighton, people are sort of thinking, oh, them, them, them games are gimmies, and then they're not. No. The Wolves game's going to be tough. Uh, but this one, I, I, I don't like playing Brighton. I don't know what it is. Funny thing is about it, right, is if you actually look at all the games in our running, the only game we lost in that running yeah, he's, last he's year Man was against Man United. You know, we beat Brighton. I think we've we beat when Brighton. We played away. Brighton. We had they had a couple of players missing, didn't they? And I think that also if, we, we got a little. There, there was one point in the game. I think did we end up winning it four two? Four, four, yeah, four we, two. We, yeah. we I think we were four four, four one up. But, but then they started coming back into it. I think things went our they way. They started coming back in at the yeah. end. I, I don't know. We another, played really well that day. Yeah, we did. And we then did. we sort of like I again, we won there for again. Um, scored early, didn't we, Saka? Again, when I talk about learning from the other, you know, the, the Luton game, if you remember rightly, we win the lead, comfortable, then we're attacking, 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 all of a sudden they get a couple back and then it's just starting yeah. to look a bit nervy, yeah, you know, because these... They were 4-0 up then, it was no, it wasn't 4-0, I think it might be 3-0 or something, but, but I do Yeah, I, do I think it might that, be 3-0. Yeah, I, I do remember there was a stage in the game where they got, and it was maybe 20 minutes to go, and they seemed to get a couple... Yeah, they were getting momentum, and, we and you were, started... And we were under a bit of pressure. Yeah, started. you're starting to think yourself, could these men come back, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, and then we got the fourth, and it was... Yeah, it was hence right. why I think, we, you've seen some games this season with Arsenal, where they're just like, right, we're winning. We've got a great defence, shut, shut it down, shut it down. and you're on the counter-attack. So, but just going back to it, we beat Brighton away last season, 4-2. We beat Wolves away two last nil. season. So a very good nil. performance that was. Yeah. That just beat, before the World Cup. Yeah, right? yeah. We beat Tottenham away last season, 2-0. Two two nil, nil. Nil. Right. We lost to Man United away. We beat Chelsea at home, which was another game we got. Pretty comprehensively, remember? Yeah. Um, we beat Everton at home. Easily. Easily. What's the other home game we got? Um, we've got Bournemouth. And we beat Bournemouth at home. That, well, yeah. that, that was a 3 2. That was the 3 2, but we yeah. beat Bournemouth at home. But when you look on it like that, I know you look at the games and they're really, really tough. And even the game we lost to Man United, Man United are a beatable team this season, aren't they? They're a beatable team Trafford. last season. They got very lucky. Yeah. We had a, so, a perfectly good goal disallowed. It's Listen, we're going to have to be impeccable in our performances from now till the end of the season when we're playing in the Premier League. But if we do. If we are impeccable and play to our abilities, all of those games are winnable. Mm. Oh, I like I it. It's, it's, it's an important one. Like you said, that that first one against Brighton, that first sort of big test away. Well, actually, City was because to me, and when I looked on all the games, in in you know, remember the other day we looked at the running. My big fear was that City game. I was like, boy, if we don't win that, say we went there and lost then that's going to give a bit of a negative vibes now going into those others. You go to Brighton and you'll be like, hmm, don't know. But, but all of a sudden, that performance at Manchester City, where basically City had nothing, they, they, they didn't really get a chance in the game, 
that must give the team a lot of heart now going oh, into right, these right. other games. Now they can say, right, we can go away. You know I mean, the two, the two tough, tough ones in that is that Tottenham away, because even though we beat them 2-0 last year, this is different Spurs, and the United away. But both of those teams concede a lot of goals. This is a chance for Arsenal. It's a uh, big it's chance. A massive chance. And the other, the other thing is, and what was important about Sunday, and I think which is maybe bugs Man City a little bit, is that they're still hoping that two teams mess up. You know, like mm-hmm. if Arsenal don't win at Brighton, Brighton, they're they then still got to, they've, they've still got to hope that um, Liverpool mess up. We've only got we're only looking at this moment in time, which is great, isn't it? At, what, yeah. at Liverpool, you know what I mean? And so it, it, it's it's massive. I think you know. Listen, we get that result against Brighton. That then you know the next games at home, it, the the pressure is a little bit less on it. Mm-hmm. That's where I, I disagree with with the pressure is one thing about this league is you've got three impeccable teams so the pressure is for all three teams on every game I mean if you, if you look at I think what have we won now is it, we won 21 games so far yeah, in the 21 league games, so we, we yeah. won 21 games um, we've got eight games left mm. okay so you know in the invincible season we won 26 games mm. so we, we've, we've probably beat the amount of wins and we still might not not win. Well, the at league. the end of the day, but, Julian, if, 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 let's, let's be really honest about it. Arsenal can win their next eight games and still not win the league. That's how yeah. that's how it is, and, and that, that's what's happened in the last few seasons. Yeah, but Liverpool the, the, don't. Did Liverpool lost one game and and didn't win the league? Mm. Yeah, I, th- I think one year City won thirty two games, and Liverpool won thirty and drew. I think they drew seven or something yeah, and, lost uh, one. And, and lost one. And I think last season we won. Didn't we win 26 games last season? And that wasn't enough because City won 28. And the season before that, I think Liverpool won 28 and it wasn't enough because City won 29. (laughs) The levels now have got to such... It's yeah, crazy. as you said, crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy. just crazy. If, you're up against, if he's up against anyone else in that running, you could be looking at the running and thinking, all right, yeah. even if we drop points there, we still got this and that. Yeah. You can't even look at... You have to look at every game and think of ways that you're going to win that game. We've got to win and to win every game. It's going to be tough. But it's, it could um, well be what's needed. Yeah, but it could be well, league. Mm-hmm. Or even you, you, you do win the next eight games and Liverpool do the same. Yeah. It's, it's going to be unbelievably tough. Let me just touch um, finally on the Champions League. You know, of course, it's exciting because we've got that as well. Next week, um, Arsenal facing off in the first leg against Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, as we know, not been playing very well this season. Um, the manager, Thomas Tuchel, leaving at the end of the season. That was announced pretty early. Um, he conceded the league last week he said that basically, you know, Leverkusen have won the league. They lost in their derby matches, like the biggest match for them against Borussia Dortmund. Bayern were at home as well. Yeah, beaten, beaten 2-0 at home. <clears throat> really not performing at all at the moment um, in the Bundesliga. Haven't been overly impressive in the Champions League either. They lost 1-0 against Lazio, did turn it around in the second leg. Is the this game um, for Arsenal against Bayern Munich, I mean, a chance to avenge those two five ones that they gave us, you know, all those years ago in the Champions League. But more importantly, a chance for Arsenal to beat Bayern and get into the semi-finals. And mm. once you get to the semi-finals, got, got good chance head. you can go all the way. This game is absolutely massive. No. You know what I mean? We, 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 we're not buzzing about it yet because we know we've got the Brighton game first and we did the Premier League. But this is huge as well for Arsenal, isn't it? I mean, massive. And there is a good chance of turning them over. Home, 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 got now home, uh, home advantage. I home think, advantage. Yeah, I think we've got. They ain't allowed to. They can't bring no fans. No, that'd be you know? that'd be something. That's going to be interesting because interesting. you know. German clubs always bring a load of yeah. fans. Bayern do very vocal, great fans, but their fans have been banned because of the incidents that they had with Lazio's um, fans over there in Rome. Sorry, over there in uh, yeah, over in Rome. Um, this is uh, this is a big chance, but of course you've got the Harry Kane factor as well. Kane coming back to 
the Emirates, a place where you know he scored a lot of goals against Arsenal over the years. How are you guys feeling about that game? Well, I, th- I think if you look at the performances of the two teams over the last few months, there can only be one winner. But I did that with Porto. Mm. And it just something about, as people kept telling me, including yourself, oh, it's the Champions League. It should just be football. So we should go and, and beat them. But it is a different type of game for whatever reason. Mm. Maybe it's the two, two leg side of it. And Bayern are exceptionally exceptionally talented and experienced at getting through and so is Tuchel you know he, he's he been you know he's had a good you know, he's had a good run in the Champions League so I was far less wary for Porto than, mm. I, than I should have been and if Porto can do what they did to us then Bayern can easily beat us I think we've got to, got to be at our very very best at the Emirates very, our very very mm. best uh, take a two goal lead I think we need a two goal lead. Yeah, whether it's 2 0, 3 1, 4 2, or something like that. I, yeah. I, the away goals thing don't matter now, like, so I'm, I'm, really go for it. Really I'm, go for it. I mean, we especially don't want to go to Bayern and it be close and the risk of, of extra time and, and penalties. Plus. plus, of course, that um, we've got a flight early, so we'll probably <laughs> miss that one. <laughs> no, our, I just, our, just think our, like, form, our yeah. form has been. Um, just got to do it at home. I think our like, form as well important. away in the Champions League is not yeah, great. Yeah, so I, I, need to take advantage of the home advantage. I, I think when you look at the Porto game, you know, you expect Arsenal to go through in that game, and it was very, very difficult because they're well organised I think I don't know if it was Julian or, or yourself who made the point is these teams are used to winning mm. that's why they're where they are like you know so I don't think Bayern Munich are going to come there and, and and park the bus I think they're going to be be cautious but going to going to come and play they, they fancy their chances and that might might help us yeah, it's mm. also the only thing that can save their season yeah yeah yeah. But sometimes, as we well know, like you know, that's that's a pressure that you don't, you can't do. You know, they must be like, thirteen points there off of. Uh, you know what I mean? Like mm. that's ridiculous. That's the Harry Kane factor. Yeah, you know what I mean? So you know, I, I think it, you know, drill it into them. You know, I, I, I don't know if you watched the the, the Bayer Leverkusen game against Munich. They they destroyed Munich that mm. day, three three nil, destroyed them, got at them. That's what we, that's the sort of performance that we got to do. And listen, you know, if we play like we, do, you know, like Liverpool have been fantastic this season. They come here, and we put them to the sword. Um, it could have been more than what it was, and that's what we got to do against Bayern Munich. Yeah, I want to ask you both finally, Christian, as well. Pick now. Everybody's back apart from Timber. Start with you, Lee. Pick your strongest lineup. Strongest lineup. I'm going to go uh, Ramsdale in goal. <laughs> <laughs> He's still pushing uh, for Ram- Ramsdale. No, right no, back. No, 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 no. You know, we're getting, getting me somewhere. <laughs> no, uh, Raya in goal. Ben White. Saliba, Gabriel. Left back. Kivio. Right. Party. Rice. Odegaard. Front three. Martinelli. Havertz, Saka. No Jesus. Everyone's fit. Yeah. Everyone's fit. Full fitness. No niggles, no nothing. Right, so I'm, I'm going to agree with it. every single one of those apart from one. And there's a caveat in that one. In as much as the, with the left back, it depends on the opposition. You, yeah, I, I know you're saying. Yeah, I mean, you, you play Zinchenko in some particular games. Like yesterday was the perfect game to play in. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And then it becomes, so that's um, why you, you can't pick. Would you go Havertz instead of Jesus in? Is that what you're saying? For, I just think it gives us something yeah, a little bit I mean, different I mean, than would, we need. I would at the moment. I I'd would go. at the moment. <laughs> Great problem to have, isn't it? Um, so, yeah, Ray and goal. Ben White, Gabriel Saliba, we know. Saliba, Gabriel. Tommy Asu. At left back, I'd go. Um, Parte, Rice, or the guard like what you went. And this is where it gets tricky now. Saka, Martinelli. Oh. It's a tough one because I'm a massive Jesus fan as well. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I really am. 
when, when he played against Seville, how good was he against yeah. Seville away, by yeah. the way? Have to be Havertz, man. Just from a yeah. team point of view, it would have to be. It would have to be at this moment in time. It would have to be Havertz because I just think he's been integral to the way we've been playing. But to leave, it's mad that you're going to leave out Jesus if he's fully fit and on it. Yeah. But but here's the thing: you wouldn't be leaving him out. You'd just be bringing him on at another stage yeah. of the game, and but that's how the game. This changed bodes that. well. One well, also trying to point out the fact that this bodes well for both the Premier League and the Champions League. That these some big players there that can come yeah, in. I, I mean, it's unlucky for Kivio that he's getting dropped out of my team. Mm. Zinchenko played very well against Luton. You know what I mean? And is, you know when you, when you're playing against teams that are going to let you have the ball, he's a he's a he's a essential player. Dropping so in you, and giving you say that, that about midfield. Um, Tom Yasu, and I'm not going to argue with you there, but that was the game to give him minutes yesterday, and he never did. Yeah, but then he gave Zinchenko. You can't give him. No, but I'm saying yeah. if you're gonna, if you, if if if, if Tommy Asu is gonna be your main man, because I think at the end of the day, I'm looking at the end of April, beginning of May. Say if Arsenal beat Bayern Munich, the end of April we've got Tottenham, then we've got the semi-finals. We need Thomas Partey at his very, very yeah. best. Well, I think very, if you've got Tommy Asu at his very, very best, and we're Should up be. against Tottenham, and he's got a Mark Son, I'm more confident. Then as good as Kivio's been, I'd be more confident with Tommy Asu dealing with those wide threats of Son or you know Kulazeski and Johnson. Yeah, yeah. But, I, but if you're also looking at resting players, for for you know you you rest. Well, ben, I'm a fully dis- you, yeah. no, I'm my strongest possible side. Yeah, but you you can take Ben White out the the team for one game, and you can play. What game, um, though? Yeah, but I'm gonna make my strongest well, possible side. I, I mean, I, I would do strongest do, possible. Do the Bournemouth game, Bournemouth at home, which is the week before we play Man United away. I think that's another opportunity that he'll have to mm. rest a few players. Yeah, but I, I do. Think Bournemouth have anything yeah, to play we, for. We, we're going to see. Side. I think we will see the squad rotated. Um, and some of those guys who came in yesterday, particularly Smith Rose, given the manager a, a good headache. You know what I mean? To to have. But anyway. Big games coming up. Every single game is a cup final from now till the end of the season and it kicks off again this weekend. Brighton away will be there at the game. Looking forward to it. Absolutely massive. And then next week, Tuesday, Bayern Munich at home. Harry Kane coming to town. Massive game. It's It's exciting exciting times, times. right? And of course, we'll be back here with the Invincible podcast next week and we'll be assessing how we got on in those games. Hopefully, it's uh, super positive. The season, the games, they're running out now. Can Arsenal get over the line in even one of these big competitions? But it's exciting times, guys. Yeah, exciting yeah, right. times. Thanks, Julian. Thanks, Lee. And thanks to you guys. Don't forget to subscribe here to AFTV. And uh, don't forget to check out um, all the content around the game that we had yesterday, the Luton game. That was um, some great interviews after the game. And some negative and- ones. And some neg- well, one negative one, one very negative guy who spoke first. Is it was it because you didn't hear everybody else speak? No, it's, it's how, <laughs> no, that's not. I, I mean, that, that's ridiculous. Do you think I listened to Lee? Um, I mean, if if I'd come well, it out, it does with, look like maybe he does have a bit of an influence on you when no, listening to. Look, if I because I would often consider it, it was the first time. Yeah, if, no, you've gone on first. No, it isn't. I've gone on first on a number of occasions. You have a look at him, right? I'm going to like, if you just when you watch when you have people who you'll see him hanging around. He's like. <laughs> No, but it's more—it's it's more to hear the. It's more to hear to hear the pattern of questioning that's coming out rather than what you say. Ah, right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. If, if okay. I start coming out in my interviews with, do you know what I mean? And yeah. for every other every other word, yeah. then you're probably going to know I'm replicating it. Yeah, but yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm positive. You're not. You're not <laughs> <here>. <laughs> Well, I'm, let's hope that Julian's going to be positive on Saturday against Brighton. Uh, thanks very much, and we'll see you next week. The Invincible Podcast. Myself, Robbie and Lee Judges come together once a week to discuss all things Arsenal. Straight talking, considered discussion brought to you by the fans of the only club in football league history to go invincible.